<gasps> Look! It's the Insolindian Phasmid! A delicate tangle of arms and legs unfolds from the reeds, limb by limb, to then just stand there, moving its scythe-like arms in ghostly silence. It's still there, an unfolding mechanism of reed-like chitin hovering in place. What is that? The old man looks at the reeds, then at you. What are you talking about? The giant stick insect. There's nothing there. The stick insect is over three meters tall. It looks straight at you with its tiny pinprick eyes and its grotesquely small head. You feel your legs shaking under you and your gun, ri your gun hand rise instinctively. There is! I see it! Tell me what you see, dammit. I can't make out one small thing in the reeds. Kim, can you see it? I can see it. Four simple words. Thank God. If he can see, then you're not insane. That means it's really there, spinning slowly in absolute silence, its limbs long and slender. Be very, very careful, the lieutenant whispers, then takes a step toward the giant arthropod. Shall I change my clothes? <laughs> what do I what do I what do I want for this? Perception? Logic, you need logic when consulting a phasmid. Um, I have no idea what I want. I don't have the full set, I never bought the sneakers. The guy disappeared just before I was going to buy them. Inland Empire would appreciate being here. For the, um, there we go. In fact, maybe the... Cryptid's protection. This is, this is gonna help. This is gonna give me a plus 80 to the roll. I hope you're watching. Maybe I will put on the, um, the where is it? The where? The where is it? No. Oh, I'm already, well, I'm already wearing that. What was the other one that I found? This one. Hand-eye coordination? Yeah. Interfacing? No, we'll keep the half-life gloves on. Cell warfare? Probably important. All right, we're good. We're good to go. The creature stands on long stilt legs, antenna hanging from its head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints as the insect moves its forearms pre as the insects <sighs> Too many words. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. This is the insolent phasmid. It is. The lieutenant whispers behind you. You hear the familiar ring of his jacket unzipping slowly, painstakingly slow. The lieutenant holds a piece of milled aluminum. <gasps> he begins to pull it open extremely carefully. It's the camera. No! The flash will scare the creature off. Warn him now. Flash is loud. It won't like that. No one will believe that. He continues to pull the lens open. From the corner of your eye, you see a sudden cascade of motion ripple through the phasmid's limbs. A series of ultrasonic clicks fills your ear. 
I won't be one of those fools who didn't take a picture. He stopped fiddling with the camera, but does not put it down. Do I have the do Do I have the pheromone? Maybe I do. Okay. I don't think the pheromone will do anything. His whisper turns to a skeptical hiss, but he has stopped now. I have a minus one from saving. I can't believe it. That's right, they sprayed me with it, but then I shaved. I shaved and I no longer smell like a phasmid. Of all the things for them to take into account, they actually remembered to punish me for shaving. If I lose this roll by one, this is actually the worst game ever, not the best game. You're... Plus one, your corpse will be marked by stars. The frick does that mean? I failed by one, didn't I? No, I failed by a lot. <laughs> well, a, a lot meaning two. I rolled a four. You barely get to take one step. The invertebrate reacts with uncanny speed, skating away across the, ro the water. It's gone like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but rings on the sea's calm mirror. It's blending into the tufts of reeds in the distance, moving from islet to islet. Where? Where did it go? The lieutenant has the camera in one hand and a slip of white paper in the other, developing. I had the pheromone. I don't think I think I don't think it had anything to do with the ox spray. It was just scared. There was uncertainty. It did have something to do with the ox spray. Okay, but I'm not an entomologist, okay? Neither was the parascientist. Who knows? The only thing I'm sure of is we saw it. It was real. Tell me you got the picture. He shakes his head in silence. An expression on his face you've never seen before. It's just a blur. How did it do that? Glide? It appears the insect can walk on water, like a water strider, you know. It's almost as fast. Uncanny. It's true! I told him not to take the picture. He would have messed it up anyway. Don't you put this on me. He would have messed it up regardless. I think it went into the reeds there. Looks like it doesn't like to stay in the open for long. Damn it, damn it, I didn't get it right. Leave in rage. <sighs> what now? What now? The old man behind you repeats suddenly. He's put his hand into the ash. It's dirty and black. In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect's not looking so good. We should check him over. Also, it looks like it has some kind of nest there. Maybe there's proof in there, in the reeds. Where the phasmid was hiding, you see a little flash of white. Porcelain white. Hey! And a very expensive rifle scope. The hell is her passport doing here? <laughs> I I can imagine. Yeah, I mean I I'll I'll feel, I'll find out what happens on another playthrough, I guess. <laughs> uh This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Aranya, is issued to a black-haired woman called Katarzyn Alice. What was this doing in the phasmid's nest? 
Maybe our man, Mr. Drouse, took it from Classy, or whatever her name was, hiding place. Did, did the Phasmid do it? <laughs> <laughs> I sensed it do so. I saw something open up the buoy with spindly legs. No. Blackmailing. No. I think the phasma took it. Well, like a magpie? What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects, which would, would be highly unusual. I can see how the helmet could wash up on the island, and the scope. Maybe Mr. Dross lost it, but f to seek out but to seek out this would be very unusual behavior for an arthropod. It's classy, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger somehow. She said it would be for an Oak Mayor Schmidt. Right. Katarzyna Alice was supposed to be her real name, where Classy comes from, remember? God damn it. I don't know if I get it. Whatever. She told us a real name, right? She said it was Anok Major Smith, but how did we get from that to Classy? I don't know. Somehow managed to lie to us one more time. In a way, she's still lying to us right now. What's her real name, then? It's neither of these. We didn't even scratch the surface with her. Perhaps it's better we didn't arrest her. Knows, who knows what hell she'd be raising in my district by now. And the scope. Oh, and there's the scope that goes with the gun. Okay. What was the other thing? Helmet I can wear if I want. Monstrous looking bug eyed ceramic helmet was in the phasmid's nest. It still has some reeds sticking out of it and it smells of seawater, but it's otherwise wearable if not exactly comfortable. Putting it on feels scary somehow. Man, oh man. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. How could you not see the phasmid? See, he stares at the reeds and falls silent. The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets, his mouth, ma gap toothed mouth shaking. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling and he breathes slowly. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? Between this and the broken tire he used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. I think it's the phasmid. The arrest and the appearance of the phasmid combined. You think it's something more than that? He couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reeds for him. Could be part of the shock, but you're right. Something is off here. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it in its company. He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like, he didn't want to leave this place. And the insect, maybe. I have absolutely forgotten to take notes. I hope I will remember all this. This will be one hell of a report. They'll think we're insane. I'll tell him. We found some things in the nest. Show him the, uh, the scope. You lost it? He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope, then it somehow made its way over there, with the help of the magpie phasmid? This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to your rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. You've gotten all you will out of this poor being. Nothing. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the ebb would pull it back here. This makes sense. He could have even picked it up. Or the phasmid, even? If it did, this is incredible. 
No reaction. His breathing is slow and he appears very old all of a sudden, around 80. This is an old man at last. No longer a tin soldier, but the broken down remains of a man. Did you take this passport and other papers from a buoy on the coast? The spirit. He hears us. The spirit? No reply. He's gone again. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. Hang tight. The Spiri. <laughs> we should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. We'll be safe here if we don't take too long. <laughs> it's all incredibly interesting. Oh, maybe I should have shot it. I should have shot the phasmid. That would have fixed everything. <laughs> Five points. To sp I got so much experience from talking to him. Get another encyclopedia and and interfacing I like, never done me wrong. Spirit decor. Perception. Oh, whoops. I meant to spend that. I can't believe. Ah, oh, important roles failed. But again, like this. This seems like a, a game that is. Like, if it wasn't before, it, it even more so now. Really feels like a game that begs to be played multiple times. Like, it's incorrect to. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I could shoot at it, but I only shoo at it because I didn't pronounce the T. I know I used up my good rolls. Like, you could absolutely save the game all the time, and anytime you fail something that seems important, go back and, you know, reload in order to make sure that you succeed it, but that feels like the wrong way to play the game. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone in land waiting for you. <laughs> You're doing the choose your own adventure and you just keep your finger on the on the one page like, okay, well I'm gonna keep going, but if if I don't like it, I'm going back. Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Where are they? And where is she? You're quite the tide, party says the man without sunglasses. Suddenly his expression change and he tilts what his head. What is that? Fallen AC? What's with all the performance gear? Are you back in high school? Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man with sunglasses from the Whirling and Rags, but where are his sunglasses? No one else seems bothered by, by my found gear. Ali. You're a goddamn cop. They're afraid of you. Yes, I am a goddamn Actually, cop. are you? Are you still a cop? There's so much disco going on. It's hard to tell. Hey, calm down. You're the man That's with sunglasses. Right. And you're bleeding. We are Is not forgetting about anything. Look at you. Who are Hello, you? I'm Trent Heidelstam. 
I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicmar, and this is your special task force, or what's left of it. Special consultant Trant Heidelstam, patrol officer Judith Mino. Judith? I was saying the wrong consonant funnily. I was calling her Judy. Hi. We have come to scrap what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Precinct 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. He adds, suddenly regaining his confidence. As if he recalled that he's, in fact, a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. <laughs> this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. No, Kim, you gotta have my back. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. She says warmly, flashing Kim the tiniest of smiles, letting Lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. What's I this really about? Will help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in. Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? Shit kid? What's an, what an interesting moniker. What's a shit kid? You, shit kid, that's you. Despite all that you've done, the deserter, the phasmid, the case, because of all you've done. How did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. Damn you, cafeteria manager! You've betrayed me for the last time. Okay. People on the street helped us too, with your whereabouts. You're a legend among the drunks, Harry. A legendary local drunk. So Trent Heidelstam turns out to be special consultant Trent Heidelstam. I never said that I wasn't Trent Heidelstam. So what was up with the kid then? Mikhail? Mikhail's my son. What was the interesting history? Spying on me? No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead, and Mikhail wanted to see Martinez. It was a con it was a coincidence. So what are you special consulting here? What indeed? He looks to the dilapidated shacks, then you. I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Konigstein in the 30s, like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. I, I can't do it if you're watching. If you hey, Zach, welcome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> can't do it. If you're, if you're leering at me, it's creepy. We are... Uh, I was gonna end at nine, but now I'm into a, a... I'm into a thing. I'm into a conversation that's gonna go somewhere. No one's who they say they are. Duped. Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk and you won't be duped so easily. Gardener? Scab leader? This? <laughs> Tell me at least you are who you said you are. Yes, I'm still Kim Kitsuragi, still a lieutenant from Precinct 57. Still caught up in this crossfire, too. What's a ta- you mentioned a task force? Yeah, major crimes unit under Lieutenants Dubois and Vic Mayer. Ring any bells? Refresh my memory, who else is in this? Refresh your memory, it's a goddamn major crimes unit. There's you, me, Jude, Trant fucking Heidelstam, and Guillaume Bevy. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Fuck you, you're part of the shit show. Um, first, who's Guillaume Bevy? Well, it's an interesting story, actually. He's not smiling. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left, too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here, and Trant, because I'm forcing him to stay. 
Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde with sunglasses? Like you were? See? There. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me, I'm G. Bevy. It was going to be funny, but then you really did have brain damage, so not so much anymore. He sincerely thought it was going to be amusing, for both of you. Okay, so what does the unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit! We clear the desks of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We're shit tier now, Harry, because of you. They're your posse, or what remains of it, hand picked, hand lost. The 41st isn't. Where have you been all this time? Where have we been? We've been fucking off as far as I can remember. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. You're Detective God. Fuck everything. All will burn. Detect or die. Uh, no, this is still... <laughs> this is this is still Game of the Year material. <laughs> I am... Like... Last, last stream ended with what I was sure was the end of the game. I was like... Oh no, like, the thing is happening, I meant to save beforehand, and I meant to do some stuff beforehand, but I'm like, here it is, here's the end of the game. And it, it was so obviously the end of the game, and then it kept going, and I'm like, is this just a tiny, like, epilogue, or is it a, like, you can free wander the town just to free up the stuff, but nothing else is gonna happen? No, more, more stuff has been happening in a big way. And I absolutely have to play through it again. Why would you leave a literal police god? You were crying hysterically. You were drunk, breaking things, being emotionally abusive. You said we were going into the abyss. None of us wanted to see the abyss, so we fucked off, like you told us to. None of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage, Detective God. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia, episodic and semantic. Meaning you both forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, Pale, and so on. As displayed in our, the station call, our interactions with him, and I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before, when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting. Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you, neurologically, psychologically, and, why not, socioeconomically? <laughs> Something so sad happened to me that I couldn't be me anymore. It was a defense mechanism. Psycho... <laughs> Refreshing pages for 3070s. What the hell is that? Is it good? Should I watch you play it? Should I play it myself while you watch? Should we play it together? Is it a multiplayer game? Is it, is it an MMO? I can go for that. Shit kid is a broken man. Always has been. Who isn't? I know I am. But you know what? I keep my shit together. Also, I know a person can't wipe their own mind. However traumatic it gets. That doesn't happen. You're lying. Or insane. Or both. But Detective Vicmare, he has blanked out before. I have? Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. She pauses, remembering. Once was after the two drunks case. The other, when we looked into that mural. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. Oh! 36... See, that's because I... It's because I will never purchase another computer part ever again. That's why I don't know what the new ones are called. <laughs> we all remember last year when I made the mistake of saying, let's take computer parts and put them together. It'll form a working computer, trust me. And then no one ever trusted me again. <laughs> the two cases in your ledger, the unsolvable case and the next world mural, those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared, 
That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes, practice, and then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all, something to be explained, or approached as a defect? Look at the sensory input here. He gestures toward the scenery. Look at the ruins, the neon, listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people, live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world tape, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it, total input, hardwired to the free market. He just needed for it to end. Okay, Trent, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work on the major crimes unit? Is he a Cretan now? I need to- I want to know that. <laughs> Cross all the T's and silence them. He is not a Cretan, and he is able to do work. Or he is able to work, if not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. I don't want to be in your unit. No, Harry, fuck you. You already fucked us. I've explained this shit to Price twice. To Berdyayev, the... Four times. I'm your partner. I answer for you when you're not there. When you clocked out, I became responsible for your cases and your special task force. Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Yeah, yeah, just stand there. It's cool. Really? No, now we discuss that. He points to the water. What the fuck did you do to our motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? I thought the killer would be underwater. <laughs> Tequila sunset. I also jumped the canal, by the way. <laughs> ha 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 ho ho ho. He grabs his stomach and humorous lips. Tequila sunset. Jump the canal. So funny, Harry. Thank you for fucking me. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of my payslip. You know that, right? You're gonna get fired, and I'm gonna pay till I die. It doesn't matter. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. Wait, my badge? The thing that tells people you're a police officer. Should I tell them I don't have it? I, I got it. He squints at it suspiciously. He nods, unimpressed. Okay, and your gun? What is it with all these material objects? I could, I could show him the rifle. My gun is right here. Whew, he has it. I thought it was in the ocean. He wipes his brow in mock relief. You're drunk like a bum, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. Well, I already showed him the gun. <laughs> so it doesn't even matter that I found my gun? You were never supposed to lose it in the first place. Not lost is your gun's natural state, you drunk bum. I'll go, eh, I tried not to drink, but I can't work as well without it. It's true. This is the truth. It does give me plus stats. Well, you let the suspect escape, class you something, because you were too drunk to assess her flight risk. We've read the reports, Lieutenant Kitsuragi's. We know. Some kind of spy from the Occident, specially trained. Or not taking her in was the right thing to do. She gave a vital clue that led us to the island, or... Mm. I'll say that. She was some kind of spy. Well, she was specially trained. I'm not even going to get into who the other suspect who also escaped. Yeah, Ruby something? Or the fact that you're Everard Claire's little peon now, doing I don't know what for him, that's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the seven people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was a fucking mass murder. He did everything he could, the lieutenant interrupts him. We did everything we could. 
The lieutenant hired unvetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois got between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. I also solved this case. It's solved. All of it. Detective, it's better if I do that. It's so much better if he does this. A million times better. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. You've spent your week with him on this case. What's your take? This is... this. He's absolutely on the case. On Lieutenant Euphrater Dubois, well... The drinking, the lost gun, also losing his badge, that's all true. And he's been drinking on the job. Then there's the superstardom. He likes to, from time to time, allude to being a superstar law official. At first I thought it was a joke, but now I'm not so sure. He says disco about 20 times a day. That's not true. That's an exaggeration. It's just strange. In light of his, especially in light of his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a true blue moralist, a man of the center, not prone to political outbursts, which is commendable, but also at odds with his behavior. Odder still, he is also an ultra-liberal hustler who is always on the grind. How he reconciles these two points of view, I do not know, but he is vocal about both of them. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea, and the drugs, of course, some kind of anti-radiation drug he uses to induce visions. But despite all this, he is a great detective. One of the best I've seen, in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him anything, and he doesn't stop. In, the in all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped working on the case. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Vic Mayer, was a valiant effort. He really sang his heart out. Okay, he did something. Other than that one time, he has worked tirelessly on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He also apprehended a revolutionary brigade who stayed hidden for 50 years ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. A, a, a new species? <laughs> a colossal stick insect, three meters tall. It's on the island, camouflaged as reeds. It unfolded from them. I did not, unfortunately, get the photo, but it may have been the Insulindian phasmid. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I know this sounds fantastic, but I am a four times decorated lieutenant of the RCM. I do not make up encounters with cryptids to spice up my day. I am very, very sane. I don't doubt you, lieutenant. If you say it was the Insulindian Phasmid, then it was the Insulindian Phasmid. Boom shakalaka. <laughs> lieutenant, is the found somehow connected to the case? The killer did not seem to be aware of the phasmid's existence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. <laughs> he fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. Boom, boom, boom. Yes, but also... <clears throat> it's probably not connected per se, but the perpetrator knew of its existence. So it is connected? We could order a search. I could get people from Epis on the island. Entomologists. Doctors. There must be signs of it in the reeds. If we found the Insulindian Phasmid, well, that would be absolutely exceptional. The PR value alone. You need to make you need to make your case now. The floor is all yours. He prepared it well. The real, we have a strong da -da -da -da. All right, let's say this first. Lilianovich, a revolutionary matronym. Revolutionary matronym. The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. 
This man's mother was Lillian. He's Lillian's son, Lo Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revishol. So it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. Mm, no, we don't think it was this. Act of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old man to have been hiding for 50 years. 70-something? A strange psychosexual fascination. The result of spending all this time in solitude in the islands of this bay. And trauma, too. He gave himself a political reason. In his mind, he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have the ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. It's my masterpiece. They'll teach this in cop school. Masterpiece. Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it, it is bad. Even you can smell it. Keep focusing on the positives. Uh, I guess this? No, we won't talk about the phasmid just yet. Uh, the killer also assassinated, uh, what was her name? Holly? This conversation is for when we are no longer out in the open in Martinis, where Everard and Edgar Clare have ears everywhere. And eyes, too. Your return from the island must not have gone unnoticed. Understood, of course. But a case against Everard would be big. The consultant, too, has lowered his voice. I would prefer not to partake in anything union-related for political neutrality. This has to be good stuff for him to backpedal out of it at first me mention. Strike situation? Did we fix the strike situation? I mean, we found... I'll say yes. How? Seems to be ongoing. I see red banners on the gates. He didn't quite solve it. He cross-pollinated information between the company rep and Everard. Until the rep came to see that the Union desires war. At which point, Mrs. Messier decided to... What? Hand Claire the terminal? I masterminded a solution to an unsolvable problem. Sounds like you were played, Harry, because you were off your tits on Al Ghul. How do you know about Al Ghul? Doesn't matter how I know about Al Ghul, what matters is you're Everett Claire's peon now. Just as I said, he's a mob boss, did you know? Is that why you want us to investigate the assassination of the previous Union head thing to get off Everard's hook? No, it's nothing like that. He was reckless with information, but ec ethical. We don't owe anyone anything. This allowed us to stabilize things in Martinez. God, calm down, Jean. Good. Uh, something about the phasmid. Female? What, what makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female, and the nesting behavior, too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. It's interesting time. Forget about the rest. It had gathered items in its nest. A helmet, a scope, and a passport. You know, this would indicate that it was male. This is far from anything in my field. But I think no such nests are called bow bowers. They are for attracting mates. Bowers are built by males of species who can't afford colorful mating displays physically. This one was plain colored. Could have been male. It must be robust if it can move a helmet with its limbs. It could roll it like a dung beetle. Could reproduce Cl cloning? Uh, just a hunch. Well, then it wouldn't matter if it's male or female. The bower would just be rudimentary behavior from before the parthenogenic mutation. Logic would like me to know that what I just said makes sense from a cryptozoological point of view. Very interesting. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. <clears throat> it had mandibles that looked like hair. It was completely white on the inside. 
but also reed colored, beige and brown, a little green. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. <laughs> this guy? Trent Heidelstam? Incredible. It's a toughie that you don't have a photo. This would look very, very flashy in the papers. Nothing, none of it says vigilante murders to me at all. Great PR. I tried to, but I only got a blur. Ouch. We can still work cop discovers new species in there. I know a good guy in La Majesty. But only after the equally superior people find it. This cannot be done by fringe people. It needs to be white coats and glassware for this fly. We need professionals. Uh, there was also a dead man on the boardwalk. A missing person I found. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in the boardwalk. Drunk. How did you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of the funeral arrangements and family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Good work. I don't think I'll tell him about the doomed commercial area. I don't think he'll be very... <laughs> impressed by that. So what do you say? You want to take this hot shit back? I don't want to, but you discovered a new species and solved the murder. So I have to? So I have to. Jude? Yud? Sorry, it's Yud. Honestly, anything that ends this trial is okay with me. But he's been drinking, she thinks. This is exactly how he gets out of this every time. It's bad for him, but... Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square. The perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. I have a few questions before we go about who I am. Am I a dirty cop working for Laputa Madre? No. No? Because a suspect seemed to think... You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. He would immediately backpedal out of it. I told you it's not that bad. Who was Lena? Oh, Lena the, the wife. She lives at 1113 Tabernacle Road in Jamrock, remember? It's on the way over, near where you live, on perdition. If we're gonna drop you off anyway, she and her husband were conducting the search for the Phasmid. It's their discovery, in part. They should know as soon as possible, even if we didn't get a photo. Okay, I'll ask, who am I? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... But before... Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Koran. It's getting really cold outside. Maybe we should... It does explain a lot. Harry, it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the bicep girth. That's right, I lifted that barbell. Dumbbell? Whatever they're called. I'm not a gym teacher's encyclopedia. You're inexplicable. <laughs> the collection of phone sports where I've amassed. Some of your more old-school wording choices, your posture even, the constant stretches. Also, this guy. Just everything about this guy. And this guy, too. God, even this javelin-throwing freak here. Oh, God, contact Mike. Of course, contact Mike. He's been on about Mike again. I hate that guy. <laughs> oh, that was the boxer. The boxer named Contact Mike. Why did I join the RCM, then? The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. You, every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach Jim. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries. An incredible hope. An ocean of hope. When was this? When was I a gym teacher? In your 20s or late 20s? You really let yourself go since then. In Coron? Yes, you taught gym in Coron, I believe that's the term. Taught gym at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. Sweat and glue, warm floorboards. High school, Harry. Your goings on with Kuno, Andre, a seal, a sail. The whole thing on the ice. That's why you're so juvie. <laughs> His smirk suggests barely contained laughter. Okay, I see. Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you're a drunk. Dora something. Dora Ingerland? Yeah, you mentioned her name. Not Dora Dubois? 
We weren't even married. No one is married anymore. This is Revishaw. Six years ago? She was way before my time. Six years? The hell is wrong with you? Couldn't have been six. Let's go with three. No, it was six. Like ancient. It's an old man thing. Two old years <laughs> equals one normal year. That and Dora Engerland really tore you a new one. A big one. Who was she? Incredibly bangable? No, I mean, what did she do? <laughs> she was incredibly <laughs> That's. He's like, there's nothing more to it. I can't tell you anything else. A boor beautiful bourgeoisie woman. Wifeish. Wa waifish. Not waifuish. Wayfish, like a welkin, basically. Snow welkin, blonde welkin, heartbreak welkin. I've only seen a picture, but it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was, one you never co recuperated from. The sun's about to go down. It's time to go home. I think she taught in the Academy to Arts, east of the river, way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle class chick or the drink. Egg and chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist. Go talk to that. What will you do now? Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all this. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. About what? He pulls up his collar and looks around, the cold spring light reflected in the lenses of his glasses. Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revishol. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready. Infiltrate. Investigate. Invite him over to... No, we, well, he, he can stay at his thing. Good luck with your report. No, good luck with your report. The lieutenant smiles warmly. Damn it, yes. That. We're looking at a real brick here. The sooner you start, the better. Fuck it, let's go. Tramp brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. The great district hums in the falling rain. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls, fire traps as far as the eye can see, from Main Street to Grand Caron, from Precinct 41 to Boogie Street, forking into the rain swept horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. En rue saint grand Garon, Jean, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Torson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Vic Murray? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scottley looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing, Captain Ptolemy Price gestures with a ballpoint bat pen. Is it just plain old Jerome? Plain old Jerome like you could type with a, a normal typewriter that doesn't have umlauts and hamelflans? It's dim in the office and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the RCM. Understood. Me you know? course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? Well, there we go. <laughs> that, that was very abrupt. <laughs> I jumped even. This could be the end, or, or, something could happen. I mean, that was only like the fifth time that I was like, ah, I see, this is the conversation that wraps up the game, and then it ends. <laughs>
so... Man, this, this really is a game that it would be so much different if played a different way. Um, I can... I... I guess... I'm not sure, but I guess there are several points that are like, this has to happen, this has to happen, this has to happen. Like, it seems like the only way to to wind up in the... the shootout thing is to find your gun. The only way to find your gun is if, if you actually agree to help Everard, right? Because I put I put that off for a while. But I was like, no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do what he wants me to do. And then I, I finally went and did it, even though I fudged it. We're thinking of doing an add-on. Yeah, I, whether whether it's an add-on or a sequel, I want to play anything else. Oh my god, this is way too long. If this is live for you guys, I'll turn it down on the screen. Um, it's the sort of thing where there's clearly way more about the world that I didn't discover. Um... Oh my god, I can't believe the shit, like, th I, I didn't, I failed the shaving, th or the, uh, the pheromone roll by two and not one, but wow, what a thing for them to have gone, yeah, he, sp he put the pheromone on you and then later you shaved and that gave you a minus one. Mankind be vigilant, we loved you. Just right out to the title. All right. <sighs> so I know Ever was was saying he would really like to see me do a second playthrough. It's tough because I, like I said, it having played through what what other games have I repeated? I played through Bastion a second time, which was kind of confusing because that isn't it isn't a very game a sec a different game the second time through like. It's a tiny, tiny bit different. I played through um, West of Loathing three times, and that one felt painful. Where it felt like every dialogue that would pop up, I would go like, "Have I so okay? I saw this before." And we click through it. The voice actor you recognize the voice actor's name and looked him up. Dizzy Draws. Alright, I'll watch that later. <laughs> Interesting though. Um Oh, you didn't recognize, but you saw it was interesting, so you looked them up. Alright, cool. It does feel like there was other there's so much it's it's dense. It's a very dense game and even if it would be inter how about this how about if instead of me streaming it again why don't you guys go buy it you guys go buy it and play it on your own and just come by and occasionally st share stories of other things that have happened in the playthrough cuz when i play through it again i'd like to i don't know It just feels like I'll be able to to absorb it a little more because sometimes just you know reading everything out loud and and going oh I you know I kind of want to pick the interesting things and sometimes I want to pick the right things to do and I don't know invest in inland empire probably my second playthrough will have a lot of inland empire this one it was conspicuously low. This one was, what was my, if I just look again real quick. What was my final skill loadout? Well, this is at, before I spent the, the points here, but I was very highly in, very, very high in conceptualization and rhetoric and a couple of the motoric skills. 
yeah, Inland Empire had no points. Even though he's clearly a very, very interesting guy. Alright, so yeah, I guess I guess I've decided that I want I almost wanna maybe like record it even though I'm not streaming, just to have like a couple of highlighted clips of I can't believe that happened, but even that's more of a, a pain. Like I, I think I'll have more enjoyment out of it if I just play through it for myself. <laughs> Uh, so, that is it for Disco Elysium, one of the best games I've ever streamed, maybe one of the best games I've ever played. <laughs> Incredibly enjoyable, and grats to them, to, to Zaum, Zaum, for everything that they have done. I love it. Uh, I will play whatever add-ons or sequels they come out with. <laughs> Exa yeah, it makes it so that if you were trying to follow along with a second playthrough, it's probably not as fun to see me just going, oh, okay, yep, click, click, oh, okay, scroll up real quick, okay, yeah, I've seen that already, click, click. It, it wouldn't be as much of a complete experience as if I were to play through the whole game again as if I had not played it before and read everything out loud again, uh, which I don't want to do because that's too much time. All right, um, Saturday, what am I doing? Probably since I unfortunately missed playing Filament on Sunday. Uh, I didn't get to stream Sunday. So let's let's play Filament Saturday and Sunday, and I'll figure out what new game to start on Tuesday. So that is the plan. Thank you, everybody. I hope you had a good time. I hope you have a good night. Let's get out of here.